Okie dokie. Well, welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining in on our SWI online bake along event, which is which is brilliant. And we're all really excited. And Jean's been really excited and she's been preparing for ages for this. And she's uh she's looking forward to it. You can see <laughs> she's ready. Um so uh Jean is is a friend of the SWI, she's a soon to be member. And um, her passion is for baking and preserving, which is deeply rooted in her upbringing, surrounded by her grannies and her mum's fabulous cooking, baking and vegetable growing. She's committed to sharing her baking, cooking and preserving skills. Um, and she opened Miller's Larder, which is a haven for handmade chutneys, pickles and the renowned award winning Perfiet, I think I'm saying that right, Pickle Lily. Um, she retired as head teacher and then Jean dedicated herself to sharing her expertise with enthusiasts of all ages from five to 95. And um, she infuses traditional Scottish recipes and gives them a modern twist. Uh, Jean completed her professional patisserie station under uh, another friend of the SWI, Helen Vass, who spoke at our national conference last year. Yeah. And um, Jean is excited to lead us through this bake along using Helen's recipe, um, which is great. So hopefully everybody's ready to go. Sorry about the slightly shaky start. Um, I will be managing the chat today. So any questions that you don't feel like sticking your hand up and answering, just fire them through to me and I'll ask Jean on your behalf. So we'll move on to Jean. Yeah. Let me pin. Go. Oh. Perfect. Oh, can we hear you, Jean? I keep saying your host wants you to unmute. Am I? Can you hear me? We can hear you now. That's fine. That's fine. Right. Um, hello, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and it's um, a real privilege to be asked and a real privilege to do Helen's recipe. And uh, I'm just going to show you Helen's shortbread. Can you see that there? That's in the chef's knowledge. So Helen's in that book there. And that's her very famous millionaire shortbread. So this is a fantastic book, um, which is uh, used in the colleges. And I bought because it gives you all the sort of chefy tips and baking tips that you think, oh, I never thought about that. But I'm just going to say an acknowledgement to Helen. So thank you very much, Helen. And thank you very much to... Sanford SWI, it's their evening tonight. Met one of the members coming out seeing me today. And um, um, they're quite excited that I'm on um, doing some baking with you. And I've been really welcomed, such a friendly welcome and a very, very enthusiastic, lovely bunch of ladies. And if there's anybody from Canon B SWI, which is my mum's, my mum's Stella's. Um, she was vice president at the SWI in Canaby for many years. So if there's anybody from Canaby, Langham, Lockerbie, that's my home area. Hello, everybody. So please feel free to ask questions as you go along. And um, I hope we're going to have a really good evening. I've got a few bits and pieces here. The tins. I'm just going to show you um, some of the tins, the baking tins that I bought. And um, this one here has got holes in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. But that's a great one. It makes your pastry really nice and crisp. I've become a little bit obsessed with buying stuff. This is one of my first ones, and I wouldn't buy that one again uh, because it's not non-stick. Although it's got a loose bottom base, which is great, um, it's sort of lingered in a cupboard for many a year. So I've got those. I'm going to put those out of the way. This is a baking one that we're going to use tonight. And uh, it too has got a loose bottom base, which is brilliant. And we'll do it two different ways of um, greasing it, if you like. And I'm going to show you, I, I used some of this pastry this afternoon. Um, and I've got a fancy pan chart behind me. So I used this. And from that, I bought, I don't know, please don't drop it. I got this here. So I made this this afternoon. So I did a double prep. I prepped the pastry. I prepped the frangipan and I put in some peaches steeped in brandy. 
just because I happen to have some left, and we're always great at using leftovers. So that's literally fresh out of the oven and glazed with a little bit of the pot jam. Sitting there, cooling a wee bit. Um, I use this also for measuring my tins, and then I go on a wing and a prayer. I think, well, it'll have to fit in or it won't fit in. I'll squidge it up the side door. It'll be fine. Usually it's fine. But that's the way um, you only find out by trial and error. I'm going to put that out of the way. And I, my daughter's in France, and I come back from France, they have the most amazing pastry uh, that you can buy in the supermarkets. So my little case gets filled with pastries of different kinds and gets put in the freezer. And I'm just going to put this one back into the freezer because it's already rolled and it's in a circle and it fits that big one with the holes in perfectly. So it's it uh, uh, and they're they're so cheap. They're less than uh, less than a euro. So and I also use. These little bases here, um, one stick, loose, you can push them up, and from my pastry this afternoon, from my rectangular pastry piece, I got enough to make two little, and line two little tartlets. So I'm just going to put these back in the fridge, so there's no waste, and I also have these tiny little tartlets. I sometimes use those to make fancy pans, I make strawberry tart, and I just like to gather things like that. So I'm just going to put these in the fridge, and I'm going to put, yeah, I set my bench there. And what I've got here is I've reached a stage of the pastry preparation. And... With the pastry of 250 soft flour, as they call it, in the shaping um, world, but it's plain flour. I always use Biro. I like Biro. My mum used Biro. You can get cheaper flours, and I have used cheaper flours. And I think it's just, I've always used Biro, so I just tend to stick to that. I've got 125 grams of unsalted butter. And I've got Graham's butter. Again, I'm a dairy farmer's daughter, so I like to support our own Scottish dairy farmers. And also I've got me out, a castor sugar, uh, my castor sugar, and I've got my egg all ready to go. So what I did was, when you're making pastry, this took me about 10 minutes to get to this stage. And there's still lumpy bits in it. But I thought we're not going to spend 10 minutes watching me do the pastry and everybody will have their own um, method of doing it. You could put it in a food processor. I do have a food processor, but I don't tend to use it. I quite like making pastry with my hands, and I've got quite cold hands, so um, it's it's my hands and pastry seem to jog along on the whole quite happy. So I made this earlier today, put it in the fridge so the butter's still cold, and what I'm doing is I'm giving it a rub through my hands as well, so it just becomes like fine breadcrumbs. So I'm at that. I can still feel a couple of wee lumps in it. So I'm just going through that there. So has anybody got any questions so far? Please do ask. Nope. No questions so far? No. Okay. Can everybody see okay? Everyone's okay, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. So I'm just sort of finishing off this pastry. I cut my butter into small pieces. I have in the past tried to grate it from frozen, but then I found it sort of sticks in one big lump, so that didn't work. Um, but I just tend to cut it into small lumps, run it through my hands, give it a rub like that, try and get my lumps out. And then I nearly forgot this afternoon when I was making the other batch of pastry that I bought out um, as some of you who are going to be baking along with me uh, might have. Um, I actually put the egg in and then the sugar, but it didn't really matter. But what you don't do is put your egg and your sugar uh, together and let them sit because it's a chemical reaction where the egg actually starts to cook. Even though there's no heat, it's a chemical reaction of the sugar and the egg, and the egg then goes into big clumpy bits. Um, 
So that wouldn't be a good idea. So even though you think, oh, I'll just combine them two, the both of them together, um, that doesn't work. So that's we got my got my sugar in, giving it another wee um mix up. And now I'm gonna put my egg in. Again, I buy Scottish eggs. I would head teacher down at Hotswood Primary, PS Poultry. Um, they have brilliant eggs. So I'll we'll try and buy Scottish eggs. So give my egg a nice little mix up. Put a table knife out. Nice big draw here, which is handy. So I'm gonna mix this in, and I don't spend the whole thing put the bowl to the side. What I do is I put a little bit of water into that, just a little, and it's not gonna go in just now. It might go in because it's a is it gonna be is it going to be the right um consistency is it maybe going to be a little bit too dry so here we are mixing it round and you always think mm, is it going to come together or not and many of you will be very experienced pastry makers but I always like to think there may be some people who come along and go I don't need my own pastry so it's fine I buy pastry which is fine but I think Pastry to some people can be a wee bit scary, so it's always half fat to flour in your pastry. And I'm really pleased, I've just got myself boots on a perfectly proper pie making course um, in September with Richard Bertone. And I'm going to be making hot water crust pastry and making a proper whole pie. Uh, a vegetable pasty using um, a salt pastry, I'm told. And a pastry made with maize and turmeric. And I'm like, oh, right, every day's a school. I'm looking at this thinking, mm, it's a wee bit too dry for my life now. I'm just going to add a wee squidge of water in there for the rest of the egg. And then that means it's sitting there. And then I'm going to get myself in, turn my bowl round. Try not to overwork pastry too much. Um, so I did my PDA, Professional Patisserie with Helen, in 2020 to 2021. And what a delight it was. We did fermented products. We made Danish pastries. We did lamination. And I always thought it was like laminate floor. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but lamination is layers and layers of pastry. So we made uh, croissant. We did our Danish pastries. We did rough puff pastry. And there's different ways of doing it. There's the Scotch method. The French method and the English method. So who knew there were so many different ways of you being able to make a rough cut pastry, but see the effort of making it and doing all the turns and then you put your, your um, thumbprints in, then you let it rest and then you roll it out again and you do your turns and you do your bookends. The pastry that you actually make is absolutely fantastic. So do you see how that pastry has come together now? with that extra bit of water so don't be too scared to add in just another little bit of water because it's come together quite nicely now i'm gonna rub my hands off here and um, gather up my bits off my bench so we did lots of different threads we did our short crust pastry for savory we did our short crust sweet pastry and we did shoe pastry. Uh, and thought my shoe pastry wasn't great. I had to have another go at it. But you only learn by doing. But it was such a privilege to do it that I wouldn't leave it in the bowl like that. I would use my flour, which you're going to do, and roll out. I'm going to make sure it's not going to stick to my bench. A little bit over the top. And I'm gently, just gently, going to press it down. So what we're looking for is a disc, which will make it easier for us 
two rule out. So this will be the stage in your pastry for you, those of you who are baking along this evening will be at. Now, if we roll that pastry out just now, yes, it would fit into the tin and it would stay there for a little while and then it would shrink down. And um, what the pastry does, the gluten needs to relax. So we get it soft like that. And then a that I have covering my bowls. I'm going to cover that. And I'm not going to use this pastry tonight, but I know that I'm going to be able to freeze that. I've got a friend coming at the weekend and um, she loves Banji Pan. I've got neighbours, so it will probably find a very happy home, or it just might go into the freezer. But that's not. I'm going to then put it into a bag so the air is not going to get into it. So that's it. I'll fill that up later. But I know that's going to sit in the fridge and I'll sit there for a couple of days if I decide to use it. If I don't, I'm going to write the date on when it was made. And then I know if I've got maybe a couple in the freezer, I'll do my stock rotation and use this one um, later if I've got another. And I have got another in the freezer. So I'm just putting this in my fridge. And that's it. So Jean, would that last just two days or could you stretch it a bit longer? Oh, you could stretch it a bit longer. I mean, um, yeah, I would say it would probably last about five days, but you don't want to keep it too long because um, it starts getting black specks in it. And then, you know, the pastry starts to go off. So that's it. Yeah, so that's it. I can't hear you, Jean. <laughs> Sorry, we're just washing my hands here. <laughs> it's like you went into another room. <laughs> well, that's why my hands are all sticky. Yeah, that's important. Let's see. Back, I have got my own pastry disc that I did freeze, I did make, and I froze um, a couple of weeks ago. So it's more or less the same as what I put in the fridge there. It's nicely rested. Um, it's come out at room temperature. I must admit, mine sat out for about an hour now, and it doesn't come to any harm. The last thing you want is pastry that's too hard, and then it starts to crack and break up. So I'm just going to flour my eggs. Now, we can do the pastry out a couple of days. You can roll it out. I was in Lakeland, hardly ever in Lakeland, but we've got to see my brother and family in calendar. So you can roll it out and it stops, it helps stop it sticking between two sheets of green food paper. And that comes in quite handy, but it's down to your own preference, ladies. So I'm going to start. I'm rolling my pastry out. It's quite handy actually yeah, having it on the roof paper because then it turns and it's not sticking. So I'm starting to roll this out and uh, until I get it to be the thickness that I'm looking for. So is but the way you turn that around, you're rotating it constantly. Is that the trick to a yes, that's, that's what stops it sticking? That's what um so I'm rolling it, I'm turning it, give it a couple of rolls, pulling it back on itself. Leave it is like that. And then every now and then I might go, right? But it takes a little bit longer this way. I'm gonna roll it out with my rolling pen and it, as you can see it's not sticking to the surface um so it, it's, it's a sort of combination of what works for you so i do a sort of combination of both on the grease proof paper covered with a grease proof paper because it's a friction of the rolling pen that actually starts to make it stick and so it's actually quite a good idea to do a little bit of hope, but it comes down to what works for you. That's what it says, what works for you. So I find it's a combination that works for me. Combination of 
swearing. And then I'll I'll look at it and I'll turn it over. And then I'll flour this one. I'll roll it out. And I'm getting a nice bit of movement in it now. So I am. So what's the desired thickness of this then? Is it a couple of millimetres? Of a pound, thickness of a, of a two pound coin. Pound coin is a nice idea because it means it's very, very thin and very easily torn then. So it is. So I do a combination of rolling it out, bits of flour and my rolling pin. Now I watched Luke Cooley on um I think it was Saturday. And I think that's quite the way what Cooley had done. She just got the pastry in a big squidgy bit and squished it into the tart tin. Because she was making a fancy pan tart. And she said it doesn't matter. You just patch the bits in. And I went, well, I've never seen that before, but it seemed to work. So <laughs> I think, well, there you go. So there's my pastry, it's rolled out now, quite nice. I know it's rough around the edges, but what we're going to do is, we're going to look at our art and think, is that going to fit in? Yes, I might do another wee bit down here and uh, roll this out just another bit down here, like that. So we can go two ways of doing and greasing our tin. My granny and my mom's way of rubbing it with butter. Like that. And then pulling up up the sides. And then with your flour, give that a wee sprinkle like that. And tap it round. You see that like that? Yeah. So the flour is giving that extra bit of protection. Mm -hmm. Extra bit of um, greasing and for doing it. What I do use I will, is bake spray. You can get that online. Um, I've had this for a wee while and it's a pan oil spray for easy turning out. And I just scoosh and spray that round about. So that's what I would normally do, but not everybody has that. It was quite expensive, I think it was about £14. But I've used it and I've had it a couple of years and it's fine. and. That's my preferred way of doing it. So it is. So what and we're going to do is Gina, if you were to be doing that in a in a loaf tin, would you have started the pastry off in a rectangle? And then kind yes. of on that shape. Yes. And, and what I did this afternoon when I did this one, right? Or I'll use this one here. I would do that the same way. Mm -hmm. I would either spray it or I would grease it and I would make sure that the, the, the flour went round all round about like mm -hmm. that. And these can go in the dishwasher. Um, they're very robust. I've got an even bigger one, but what I found my bigger one is it doesn't go crisp underneath um as much, but it's it's good for like savory big wheat and cheese and ham open tart. Nice. Um as I say, so what we're going to do now is we are going to whip this over, roll that over, and then we're going to roll that over like that. And we're going to ease it into the tart tin with the through paper there and if it breaks up a little bit it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're going to squish it in like that we're going to hold it in place like that. and we will put that in the fridge and let it firm up a bit I'll cut off this is a great I'll cut off <laughs> some of the extra pastry that we're not going to need I'm going to cut that off round there like that and then what we'll do is when that's firmed up I'll take the rolling pin over it 
and roll it. But in the meantime, it needs to sort of settle itself and chill a bit into the fridge. So that's going to sit in the fridge like that. I'm going to gather this up. Not going to waste that. I'm going to wrap, wrap that up in a bit of grease proof paper and keep that for another day. So this is going to sit in the fridge. And I've got one that I've done earlier. I'm going to take this one out. So this one's been in the freezer. Take one. And what I did was I made sure it was well protected. And then I put it in a bag. And I sat it in, protect it, a pie dish. So that's what works for me. Um, so I'm taking my cling film off. It's my loose bottom tin. And what I did was when the pastry was chilled, I took that rolling pin over it and rolled it. And then the excess pastry fell off roundabout sites. So that's what worked for me. And that's been in the freezer a couple of weeks now, knowing that we're going to do this demo with you. Mm -hmm. So that's that ready. Don't need flour anymore. Excuse me. I'm going to wipe down my bench. And then I'm going to begin the fancy pan. So has anybody got any questions so far? Can I ask how long did you take the flan out the freezer for before you started working with it? Um, I took this one out the freezer about lunchtime today and I didn't need to do anything to it because I'd already trimmed it off before it went into the freezer. So that's what it would look like when it went into the freezer. So it was all ready um, just to bring out and that's my own pastry. But there's nothing wrong if you want to, to buy chocolate pastry. It seems to do a very good sweet pastry. That's the one that I've used on that one that I made this afternoon. So that's it, ready to go. But what I'm now going to go and move on to is making the fancy pan. So, Jean, a couple of questions. Did you yes. not blind bake? No, you don't blind bake. This is the beauty of this recipe. You do not need to blind bake it. It goes in the tin and the frangipan goes into it. So you don't need to blind bake it. And as I say, it's Helen Bass's recipe and it works. So it's a great relief that uh, you don't need to blind bake it and um, put baking beans or rice and then take it in and is it crisp enough and then put your filling in. That's it, the raw pea strip. That's what you've got. Now from that, I'm just going to go and get this extra bit here. From that same pastry recipe that you've got, that's the extra pastry that you've got left, which means that you can put it in a bigger one. But I'm just going with what Helen's one, and that's the one that we did at college. And this is the one that I've done lots and lots of times for different events and different people. And oh, yes, there's a little bit extra, but that's where I was showing you earlier that you can make a few little individual ones, or you can maybe decide to make a bigger tart and use all the pastry up. This, I would say, is um, a slightly smaller ring um, than the one that I've just done, but the one that I've just done has still got excess left. So it, it's quite good that you can still use the pastry. Um, and, and then just, and this has been in the freezer. So I'll use that and I, I froze it in a disc and I put it in a bag and I'll get a couple, a couple of little tarts out of that um, and either give them away. But I wanted to show you the same recipe that you've got. That's the extra pastry it made and that's the size of the tart it made. And that paste, that tart, one that I've got here, measures, it measures 20 centimetres circle, and the bigger one was 24. Just to let you see 
Yes, you've got excess pastry, but you've got your, your flan case already ready to go. Charlotte, can what I ask a question? Yes, yes of course. Mm -hmm. Um, Jean, have you ever um have you ever seen or known pastry to be made in one one bowl? I saw a lady from America and um she put all her ingredients for the pastry into a ceramic dish uh -huh. and she mixed it all round right. and then she pressed it into the sides. Yeah. And that was her pastry. She was making a pecan pie, uh, as they all do. And I just thought, oh my goodness, you know, if that works then yep. none of this, <laughs> the bother that we go to. But I'm, I'm not I'm brave enough you. to try it. I'm with you on that. And maybe that's what Prue Leaf did, because I came in um, to the programme when she was squishing the pastry round the edge of our, our flan tin. I went, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I've not seen that. But it's like, I make a white sauce and I make mm -hmm. it the Delia um, Smith way. The milk, the butter. Mm -hmm. Cold, the butter, yeah. All goes in and you whisk mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And 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 you, you you know you you can't leave it, but you whisk it and it all goes in, and you've got to be careful it doesn't burn. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the chefs when I was at college doing doing this in twenty fourteen, he went, "I've never seen that before." I went, oh, "It works." <laughs> yeah, no. Instead of this making a roux and then you go, it goes lumpy. No, yeah, I use that. Middle. But yeah, I was quite fascinated with that. Um, it just yeah. seems so so simple. So I I maybe will dare myself to try it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, you know, if that if that one there. Um, which I'm not going to use, but the technique is the same because we're already at 25 to, to 8. So for me to have gone through all of the processes, we'd have been here to 9 o'clock at night, which would have been fine. But I mean, you know, hey-ho, we've got a job on. Um, but what, I, what I'm trying, trying to do is, um, I, this is, I don't know how many ladies are, are baking along. Have you got a number there, Charlotte? How many are baking along? Or are you just... Um, we just enjoying I'm not sure how many are baking along specifically, but we've got 45 people on tonight, which is great. Well, welcome all of you. And I'd love to know your names um, later on. So I've had this out um, from this morning. Uh, sometimes I will just use a spoon. This is actually one of my chutney, uh, piccalilli and um, bramble jelly spoons. So it may uh, it, 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 too, too, too much. Too much. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, you'll have to make it the demonstrator bigger again. I'm going to demonstrate what, sorry? Is she not still big? No, you have to get her on screen. Oh, it says oh. that she's spotlit for me. Is anyone else having that issue? What, sorry? So, um, I, so, I'm sorry, I don't know who's speaking. Top right, there's a view button. If you just click that view button and you, you click speaker. Uh, it, it might make her big again if that helps. Have I to click it? No, you're good, Jean. <laughs> no, I'm right. I'm going to put this on. I mean, my cable is stretched, so it's limited. No, it hasn't worked. So no, has has anybody else got the view at the big picture? Yeah. <clears throat> Annette, try and go out and come back in. Oh, it's Annette. Hi, Annette. Sorry. Hello. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I don't want to come back in. Come back in. <laughs> um, when you press that, you actually get the option of full screen. Press uh -huh. the full screen. Full <clears throat> screen, right. I'm just going to That's ding this for 10 seconds. Yeah, no worries, Jean. Work away. Has that worked, Annette? I don't know where to press full screen. Um, mm. At the top where it says view. Is I've that got the view, uh-huh. And then down the bottom, full screen. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh -huh. Has that helped? No, it has not. Mm. So oh. try. Oh dear, the boy. And so everybody you... else has got the full screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we've all got it. Yeah. Oh dear. Right. Okay, was it just do after do. I was it just after to... I spotlit Evelyn that it happened? Yes, it was. Uh huh. Uh huh. Strange. That happened to me a little while ago in a Teams meeting, and it was just a bit of a fluke, and everyone else. Oh, I'll just it. try. Okay, so it's fine. If you do leave, I'll let you back in. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Um. Usually, if you if you click that view button and you and you go into gallery and then you you go that's back. What I'm, yes, that's what I'm doing. Uh -huh. if you maybe fiddle about with them a bit. Sometimes it might come back. Oh, I'm fine. You're all right. I'm fine. <laughs> Even 
wouldn't have a Preston gene, would it not get bigger? No. No, I don't think I don't think it works that way. No, I'll try and remove her spotlight and then I'll re-spotlight her. Let's see if that works. When you go into view, if you go to speaker, that should highlight her. Right. That's what I thought as well. Cool. Okay, you go, right. If you go to gallery, you get everybody, but if you go to speaker, you just Oh, get... I've got you now. I'll have to go down. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> so, so have we got some names, please? I've got her now, Jean. Got her now. Thank you. <laughs> got her now. Who is missing there? <laughs> So, um, because I'd love to know your names, girls. So there you well, go. I'm I'm Annette from Wigtonshire. Wigtonshire, right? Do you yes. want to see? Uh huh. So I can see you now. That's lovely. Good, good. So you see how that's come nice and soft now. Mm -hmm. So although that butter had sat out from lunchtime today, and I gave it a whiz, and it's all a good idea. I love my spatula. I've actually got a chef's formula. I think I got this free with them. Um, BBC Good Food Magazine, which I get every month. I really like the Good Food Magazine. <laughs> I sit there and go, oh, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make that. And I go, well, it might be something or other. I just love um, cooking books and magazines. Jean, so, um, are you able to just explain to us what's in that bowl again? Because I'm not sure if it was a bit missed. What, what am I doing? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, just what's in the bowl. Uh, what's in the bowl? The butter and the sugar. Butter and sugar. Butter and sugar, okay. right. Yes, I've got... Um, and I'm sure it's 100 grams of sugar. I'm just going to check. Give a spectrum. 100 grams of unsalted butter. And you know, although it says unsalted butter, quite often I don't bother. I, when I make shortbread, I use salted butter. I like a wee taste of, of um, salt in my shortbread. So that's it, quite nice and soft. And um, I'm now going to add my eggs in. And I've got my parking plate. Because I don't know about you girls, but I sometimes can be a bit messy. I'm, I'm quite, I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone slightly because I like to wash up as I go along. But that's not happening tonight because I know you would miss me. So I've got a parking spoon, plate, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one egg in at a time. And uh, they've sat out. I keep my eggs out. Now, I've got my mother's old hen, hen the edge, as she called her. I've got my mother's hen and I keep my eggs in, 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 her, in her hen. So I'm going to mix these in one at a time. Are you mixing them with a whisk, like electric whisk? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a Kenwood stand uh, mixer, which I do use. Uh, but really, for the small amount, by the time you get it out, by the time you get the bowl out, and then you have to wash it, I just use this. This is a Dulite. Um, I really like it, and the cord with whirls round and gets them um, um, all out of the way. So, I have had. I have had my disasters of splashing my kettle, my window, and fact, uh, you know. So I'm not going to use these anymore. I'm going to put them in my bowl. And I'm going to show you what you can add in for flavoring. Chefs um, seem to, on the TV, go, oh, almond essence, it's got such a, 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 a synthetic flavor. But this is a taste of different Moroccan almond essence. I actually like that. But Helen's recipe calls for um, vanilla, pure vanilla. Now, this is out of Costco, and I've had it for years. As you can see, it's quite a sort of scruffy-looking bottle. So I just, I use this. Or this is the Deluxe. This is a Villa Be vanilla bean paste. And um, I'm going to show you as it comes out. Does any of you use vanilla bean paste? I've got to be careful not to put too, too much in. It's about five or six pounds. So really, that's all you need. And it's got all the tiny little vanilla um, seeds, the tiny little vanilla seeds in it. Bit of a lid, go through the lid. And um, so this is my prepared one. But you know, every now and then, I, I actually cook and bake for uh, an afternoon tea lady. Um, the Scottish Tea House at Dillaburn. And I do a park and loaf. It's Betty's park and loaf. Very generously shared that. 
and um, it's a, and it's got ground almonds in it. I just love ground almonds. I think they I think they, they keep your baking really nice and moist. Mm -hmm. I do uh three chimneys fruit loaf, and it's a great recipe. So I make those for Joanne. So what I've got here is my plain flour. It's going to go in fifty grams of plain flour, and I've also got the ground almonds. So I don't use the mixer. Once it's whisked up the eggs and the sugar and the butter, um, you could mix it up, but I actually find it quite satisfying just, you know, going around the bowl like that. And, you know, it's... So my ground almonds are in. That's them. And oh, I've got I kept this out because when I was cutting the, the circles out for the... You wouldn't think you would need something as big is that to fill that and give a slight overhang, but but you do, but that's why I kept that out. So we've had some bacon white and shower. Where else are we? How are we tonight, ladies? Where else have we come from? I mean, do we know Charlotte? West Lothian. West Lothian? Mm -hmm. Isle of Arran. Oh, yes, very good. Dunbartonshire. Where, sorry? Dunbartonshire. Dunbartonshire. Uh -huh. Shed. Hi. Hi. Uh-huh. Orders. 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 Uh, anyone from Dumfries and Galloway? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Who's from Dumfries and Galloway? Come on, girls. We're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Hall from Musselt. Musselt. Oh, yes. Musselt. Yes, yes. I knew a singer there, um, Susie. Oh, gosh, she used to come around the schools and do traditional folk music. She lived at Muzzled. Is the school still open or is it closed? No, it closed a number of years ago. Right, yes. Uh -huh. So who else is from Dumfrieshire? Yeah, I am. Ah, uh, Linda, we can hear you. And uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where are you from, Linda? Uh, I stay just outside Dumfries. Uh, I belong to the stewardry of Kirkubri Federation. Uh -huh. So do I. Oh. I'm just outside Castle Douglas. Oh, right. our national president. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mary's with us. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this for a minute or two. It's still quite nice and soft. Now, don't make the mistake I did once of thinking, right, I'll put it in my piping bag. You don't need to put it in a piping bag. You can spread it out with um uh uh spat um uh what's it called? Where are you? Where are you? Um palette knife. Palette knife. Palette knife. Here. Uh, no, that's my cake slice. Got that. My palette knife, maybe it was washed and put away. You can put there is my palette knife there. This is a great way to list. Um so you don't need a piping bag. It makes it easier. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think I still always go back and use that. Use that. So I don't make the mistake I did of putting that in that bag and then put it in the fridge. And it sort of went rock hard. And then you go, oh. so you had to ding it slightly to soften it. So if you if you get distracted and think, right, I'm going to make that in the morning, I'll come back and then I can do it and then I'll cook it and it's still it'll still be warm. Um, I would just keep it, I've got, I, I sort of kept one I had it in my utility room, so it's not warm, warm, because my kitchen's got quite warm today because the oven's been on. Um, but what I'm going to do now is we're going to do cherries. So I've got a lovely cherry jam. This is, um, I love Bob Paul, my mum. I would actually bring this back, but you can buy this here. Um, so I'm going to use the cherry jam. And Jean, were your, um, your piping bag, did, did, did you have a roll of piping bags? Yes. Great. Oh, uh huh. Super. Great, great things. Mm -hmm. Um, I buy them from um, I buy them online. I mean, you buy it. It's an online these days. Mm -hmm. You know, they, these have lasted me for ages, and you see how they tear off like that. Yeah. You know, the last for ages, and I just keep them in my baking cupboard. Um, I have tried a plastic bag. You know, like one of your food bags, mm -hmm. but it's you need the strength of this thicker plastic, you know. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put some um, 
Have you been down to Wigtonshire, Jean? I have. I mean, Essen and Fries and Galloway as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I have. Um, used to take my mum um, down. My mum and I were, she was a great gardener. We loved making round gardens and went to the Wigton Book Festival. Oh, Langham. yes, uh-huh. Um, but, you know, Langham, oh, we, we were over that side, so it was a bit of a, a thought to go over. It's a bit like us from the Glasgow and the West. I know, uh-huh. <laughs> Were you, ever at, were you ever at Logan Botanic Gardens? No, I no. wasn't. Um, well, you, ha you, have to, you have to come there. <laughs> I'd love that. Now, my friend lives um, in um, between Loch Maven and Lockerbie, the one that's coming up at the weekend. And I mm -hmm. think they went to Threve. She became a volunteer at Threve Gardens, you know. All right, uh-huh. So I'm going to put my spoon away. Yeah. And I'm going to show you. I've just sort of spread a layer on the bottom like that. Now, the one that I've got there, here, I put um, apricot jam in the bottom. I don't have peach jam. And I'm using up peaches, but I mean, anything sort of like that is um, fine. I mean, I, you could even, if you wanted, put the cherry with, with that and, and have whatever fruits that you want in. But um, what we're going to do now is we've got that there. <coughs> Yeah, put it on my baking tray because I don't want it to fall off and slide off like that. Talking of which, falling off and sliding off, I've got Scott Hot. Um, it's uh, for the food industry. And um, I was there because our pickle only goes out as food service. That's it there. That's we put it out in Lazarda food service. And we also use some retail jars. So I was there seeing different people and um, I'd been at one of the stands and they give you all this free food to try. It's very nice. So happily scoffing bits of sausages and whatever else. And I turned and I fell off a wee step. Came to the arms girls of two very handsome baby chefs. And they said, are you all right? I said, well, I think I am now. So um, <laughs> oh, and they said, do you want to come and see our stand? Because they were there um, promoting the, the fact that you can have a career in the, the Navy. So I went round to them and they introduced themselves. Um, one was Matty Chu and the other one, I think, was an Ian Wilson. So they were telling me about what they did. And they said, well, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a lady that travels with Piccolilly. So I, when I go to these events, I've always got a jar of pickle away or two in my bag. I, I'm, I'm not a, a girl that's got a, a wee bag. So they went, oh, could we try one? I said, yes, please do. So for chefs, they were very good. They put a spoon. And they did, and they, they went, went, oh, I think the Admiral will like this event. The Admiral. Yes, one of them said, I'm the private chef to the Admiral of the fleet. I went, Really? She said, yes, are you listed? I said, yes, the Brie Head Boots, that's one of our wholesalers. So I went round to see Ramsey's Acrylic, and um, they're one of our customers. We buy from them and they buy from us, and Ram Andrew's got the piccoli and a couple of chutneys in the shop. So the next thing I knew, um, Blair, one of the um, uh, sales reps, had said, Jane, Jane, I said, what is it? He says, the baby's been round and they put in an order. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That is what, what all came out of a fall? All came out of a so, so you see, falling off a step into the arms of handsome Navy chef. <laughs> out of battle happen again. So there we go. I've got my piping bag, right? Uh, did you notice I didn't cut the end off mm -hmm. yet, girls? No. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to store it and you're going right and a way off, I know some of you will be farmers, have lambed many a sheep, have many a cow, milk many a cow. And you get distracted. So what you would do is just clip it like that. But if you're in the middle of doing something, if you've already cut it, just clip it again at the bottom, and then that keeps it ready, ready for action, ready for action. So um, I'm ready to cut the bottom off now. To find that tiny which we're about earlier, we're about earlier. Um, I haven't put them away. Or I could do. What? Oh, there they are. I'm going to say, or I could do what James Martin does. Now, did you know I was on the James Martin show? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> what a lovely man. He really is. I met him at the um SE, no, it was at the I think it was at the Armadillo uh, and, and it was Helen that got us free tickets to go backstage and meet Sam Head, who is his home economist, and um met James and he was just lovely in time for people and he chatted and I said, Carl Pickle I gave him a jar, you see. And a jar of chutney and Sam got a jar and then they loved it and then they went, We'll oh, have to have you on the show. So I went, so that's how that all came about. So what I'm going to do now, apart from putting my glasses on, I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to pipe round and round, a bit like a snail. And then I move it down and I get my pressure right again and I twist it and I pipe it round like that. But if you don't have a piping bag, all you would do is dollop it in fairly evenly and... then use the palette knife, which is what I'm going to use actually. So I'm squeezing it out, because I'm not going to have any waste. I could be maybe more economical and keep a bit back and fill those little um, um, little baking tins that I've got. But I'm not going to, I'm going to put that in like that. And then this gets binned and you can be really quite economical and get it out like that. It's another extra bit out like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my palette knife after all. I'm going to bring it round. And because it's on the tree, I can turn it round. It's a bit like turning the pastry round. I can turn it round like that so that it's sort of even at the sides and ready to go. So we're not finished yet. No, 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 no. So I've got my cherries. So these are just frozen cherries. Um, I have used tinned ones, fine, because it's going into something sweet. I have used tinned ones. What I've also done um, at Christmas time was, because the cherries have got a little hole in them, put a little a little callet, as they call it, of um, chocolate. So you get a little hit of chocolate. And I have also made um, a chocolate pastry and I've done a mix of my frangipan with some half cocoa and half um, just kept half plain and then it swirl like you would a marble cake. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put my oven on although if you don't get this cooked just now it will sit in the fridge and you can cook it tomorrow morning. So get that in What's left here will go for my yogurt for my breakfast because I had this is the last of the black forest black black forest black cherries and they're really cheap to buy far cheaper than buying fresh cherries and um, we buy them in the bags so squish them down like that but I keep them for my breakfast like that so that's me there like that. And I'm ready to go and put this in the oven. So I've got it on three to four, gas three to four. Um, I did write it down for electric, what it is, electric or fan, but I don't use fan, so it doesn't, I, I don't quite remember. And the same for the people with the agar, but it's gas three to four, middle shelves. I put it in the oven. I set a timer for, um, I set it for about 30 minutes because sometimes there's one side of my oven, I've got a 10 year old range master and one side of my oven is a wee bit hotter than the other. So then I'll turn it round. So I'm setting it to 30. I make sure it's on because sometimes I think I've set it and I haven't. And then I go, oh, hello, long have you been in for a <laughs> Do that as well. So what I'll also do is, and um, I've had this folded for this one here. I'm going to move my debris out of the way, ladies. That's the timer going. That's that one going. Um, but what I all you can also use uh, tin pairs. And it's up to you whether you want to put uh, almonds on. I did put almonds on to this one here. I did. 
And I don't put them on when they go into the oven because they brown a bit too much. So what I do is I put them on about halfway through and they sort of stay on. And what I did when it came out the oven, not straight away, was take some cheap apricot jam. You don't need to use your good stuff. And this is what we were taught it calls to do. You take it and they called it plasticized it. They do that with strawberry jam. You mix it around so it goes, it goes back. It's a bit like I make bramble jelly. And I use my mother and granny's jelly pan. I don't use a jelly bag. I, I use a sieve and I, I, I sieve it the next day. I know. Um, so that's 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 the method I do it. So maybe you'll ask me back and I could do a, a bramble jelly the quick way. So you see how it's going so nice and squidgy? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So that means then with the pastry brush. Not when it's straight out of the oven, but just give it a minute or two, is to then use your pastry brush yeah. and paint paint it. And it gives it that, I've already done it, but I know another coat won't make any difference. And um, it then gives your pastry a really nice shine and it looks very mm -hmm. good. Uh, yes. Um, and you know, it's added to the flavour. It's the flavour that's underneath. So it is. So it's not quite like painting the wall, but it could be. So that's that, and then that can go back in the end. Uh, well, it back in the end because it's touched in the... Can we have uh, a little question? Yes. Uh, what would, what, what's the best way to cut the pears? What's the best way to cut the pears? Yeah. A bit like I have cut peaches because I just put them in whole. What I did with the peaches was... I took them out and I've got a couple left here. I actually dried them. It, it, it won't really matter. But what I did was I sort of I sort of curved them round like that. So they're like little fingers. And I curved them round so that you're then left with little little nice little slices like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually need an awful lot, you know. Um, and if you look at my paste, my frangie pan here, I'm going to cut it. So do you see how it's come out? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, so that is... pears on the top? That's what, sorry? Is that the pears on the top that you can see? No, no, this is peaches. And oh, those peaches. are, are, are um, uh, flaked almonds. But can you see, is that the peaches you can see on, on the top? Yes. Like darker. Yeah, that's lovely. Yes. So that was only like two peaches. And when you spread them out like that, you know, again, it makes them go all the way or you're using something up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cut it. These are peaches in brandy, which I spied somewhere or another that were all of them. Um, I think it's something quite ridiculous, like 60 pence. So I went, oh, I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but I will. So... <laughs> Because these haven't been and touched any cake thing or anything, these can go back in. They could maybe even go into cocktail girls. We could have a wee cocktail later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're going to go back in, but that's so your pears would be the same. You, you, you would cut and fan your pears out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. So that's them back in, nice and safe and sound. And I'm going to put the lid on that. I'm going to get a bowl of that. I use this part about three quarters way through the cooking. I thought mm, it's getting a wee bit too brown at the end. And it's like I do that with my cakes with my um not not my parking that's dark brown anyway, but with my fruit loaf when it splits, I think mm, maybe get immediate brown. But it just takes it. What I'm going to do is take this out. Take this out, lift this out, like that. And This is my favourite knife. This is my global knife. I love this one for cutting apples. It just suits my small hands. Mm -hmm. um, and this is my big shape knife. 
I like this as well. Don't know which one to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take it off the base. It's still a wee bit warm. Because it literally came out of the oven just as the program was about to start. I'm going to see if I can take it off the base. It doesn't matter if I can't take it off. Oh, there we go. It's coming off. Uh, it doesn't matter if I can't take it off. But I'm going to slide it off. So I am. And move that over. Like that. And I'm going to cut a piece off. You hear that crunch? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I could just do a bit of that. No oh, soggy bottom. Lovely. Oh, it looks lovely. No soggy bottom. <laughs> Mary Berry, watch out. Once you guys get going, there'll be no holding you back. So oh. this is one of my lovely, lovely. I think it's 1840. I got it in for 20 pence, a set of six, 20 pence out of the Langham charity shop. And you know what her elder daughter said? She lives in France. Her partner's a far a dairy farmer, an arable father. You've got to leave those in your will for me. I went, really? <laughs> So I'm going to cut myself a little bit. Did you hear that crunch? Mm. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, could you see a wee bit of that? So oh. do you see that? Lovely. It's nice. Lovely, Chris. Did we need to do any blind baking, ladies? No. No blind baking, no. Sure. No blind baking. So what I'd like to serve it with is some creme fresh. Because it's quite sweet. And what we'll do is do a wee quid quenelle. So we've got the rest of it here. And I mean, that endy bit's nice and crisp. And that's it there. So what we'll do is we'll get a quenelle. We'll get our spoon. We'll go from one to the other. One to the other, like that. Or sometimes they call it a washi. I might put a little bit more in. It's not quite not quite filled enough. So they call it a washi. I don't know why. Well, I think of Ferrero Rocher. It's nothing like a Ferrero Rocher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so it could go on the top, but it's still warm. And I think that is actually the best way to eat a frangipan tart. Right. It's still warm with an ice cream quenelle. Now, you could go the ice cream route. You could go some squirty cream, uh -huh. but, you know, I think doing it in a long one like that is very economical. Mm -hmm. And you could probably get about, I think probably about at least eight, maybe ten out of that. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that, ladies. And That's been brilliant. <laughs> you. just all I hungry know. now. I know, everyone's wanting something sweet. I know, you? I could just love a bit. <laughs> Well, you know, I wish I wish we could do um, you know, maybe Zoom in the future will be Zoomy vision and you just I just give you a bit and you just reach out and take it. Wonderful. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed sharing with you. Um and as I say, the the one in the fridge, um it, it by now I could probably roll it out and it would be at the stage that the one that I put in the oven is. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to bring it out. It's not like a cake that I'll flip it straight down. But what, what the nice thing that happens is the cherries. I don't know. Can you see that? The, the cherries start. Yes. Uh huh. The cherries start to bleed into, mm -hmm. um, and you get the juice. And if you've got mm -hmm. a bit of chocolate in there as well, that's like a wee hidden surprise. Cherries and chocolate. Uh, that will sit in there and I will look at it in half an hour and go, hmm, maybe need to turn it turn it slightly. <laughs> I might, I might, I think this one works with the almonds on. Mm -hmm. Personally don't think you really need it with the cherries, but you can do um a, you can do as I say the pears and you cut and fan your pears and you just put little bits in and you sort of maybe have them one one way and one another way. Mm -hmm. uh, and you found them out, and that was only two peaches on, on that tart there. But I've thoroughly enjoyed um, meeting you. Is there anybody got any more questions or anything like to ask me? 
Can I just say I got a bag of frozen cherries today yes. in, in Lidl's and yes. I've taken some out and I'm sure I've got more than half the bag in the freezer for a couple of pound, one pound ninety or yes, something. They're such good value, aren't they? And what I did was um I I I drained the cherries because there's quite a bit of juice comes out. Right? Because uh -huh. you don't want that going into your frangipan mix. But um as I say that I'll keep that juice and I'll have that with my yogurt tomorrow morning as well. So uh -huh. not, it's not that I'm not gonna throw it away. It's nice, it's tasty, I like uh -huh. cherries. That's why I make cherry um, brandy pan. <laughs> I'm speaking from Digger in Lanarkshire. Are you? Bigger. I was in I was in Digger up at Errington Cheese yesterday and I went and they had my lunch in the crown. <laughs> <laughs> They've opened a coffee shop, the Red Barn. Yes, it's now going to be Errington's Barn. And just today, Selena has put the piccalilli that James Martin used to accompany um, the... Scotch eggs um, on, on her online shop. I've had quite a lot of interest and um, she's been, we worked well together. And I bought some of her cheese yesterday and, you know, but I, 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 I think it's lovely. It is. And they've got a new chef in there and they've got lovely cakes. Somebody called Gillian makes their cakes. So their cakes are baking lovely. It's well worth mm -hmm. a visit. Yes. Well, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone right. else want to say anything else or ask anything else, ladies? Okay. No, that was just that was just lovely. I'm an <laughs> I'm the one for Wigtonshire. I've had an right. upset. I've had an upset tummy this afternoon, so that's just. I've had a wee brandy, brandy and port supposed to help your tummy. You see, right. so that's what I've been drinking while I've been watching you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> been, it's been lovely. I just I just love almondy things. I must try it. It's just been so I, I, it's, it's one of my very favourite things. And as I say, it's up to you, ladies. If you I want just to love it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit of almond essence. I'm yeah. not so keen on cherries, so I would put <laughs> peaches or the pears on or the <laughs> almonds or so. Oh, I know yes, that. or almonds. Or you could make it into a cherry bake well. And, um, yes, you could. Uh -huh. you, could put you could just put um, raspberry jam in the bottom. Right, go uh -huh. through it on the top, uh -huh. and then you could do your glaze, your glassy icing, you know, with your icing sugar, and then you could cover that. And then when the icing's just about setting, you could put on your your um your glassy cherries, and you've no, it was just just I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you for joining. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, ladies. I'll have a glass of wine now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thanks so much, Jean. That's been great. Oh, thank you. And I'm sorry Linda couldn't join us. Well, no, she's I... actually here. I think she'll probably give I'm a little bit of say yeah. a little thanks and a goodbye if I can just find her. But just right before I go, just to let everybody know that I will be sending out a survey to everybody in about four minutes. So if you have a wee second, just let us know how you liked it, if you enjoyed it, what you would like the next time. Maybe we can peer pressure Jean to come back and Give us a tutorial on making jams and preserves. Well, this, uh, I mean, my my bramble jelly, I'm so proud. It's called Stella's Bramble Jelly. Um, I did a shift at Moneyfield and I got paid and the money that I get paid goes to Cancer Research Scotland and uh, the Lanark branch. And uh, my Stella's Bramble Jelly um, was served to Princess Anne with her scone oh. for her afternoon tea. Oh. And I'm so proud. I'm, I'm delighted and my mother would have been so pleased she died three years ago of rectal cancer and um, I just hope one day that we can find a cure you know so but mm -hmm. um, delighted to have been asked and delighted to be with you so if you want to think of anything else that you think oh I'm quite fancy doing this or quite fancy doing that well we will <laughs> give us a shout <laughs> bye girls oh, I've got, Gina, I've got I'm still on I'm going to have my reward. Never mind the brandy. I think I'll go for the... I'll go for the Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> so, Jean, we have Linda here. Linda's a member of our of SWI's board, and she'd just like to say thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jean. Before I give you your vote of thanks, can I just apologise to Charlotte? 
I came in at, at half six and I had technical issues and then I had no sound. And I think my blood pressure has gone up about <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. I absolutely can identify. And you go, I'm not a stupid woman. It's the, it's the thing. <laughs> Yes, and I thoroughly enjoyed your demonstration, as I'm sure all the ladies this evening have, and all the tips and hints that you gave us, they've been all absolutely uh, wonderful. And uh, I do hope that you will come back again and, you know, give us another demonstration. And this time I'll get on at the very beginning. I'll make sure I'm on at the, the very Sometimes beginning. Sometimes that doesn't make any difference. It's, the machine. <laughs> it's right. nice to have met you. Well, it's lovely to be here at, at long last. And ladies, can I get you all to unmute, please? And uh, we'll give Jean uh, a nice round of applause. So thank you, Jean. Thank you, ladies. You've been brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.